So now they can. I am. Yes. Bisman. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحم This is our last session of the 15th term of Hujjat Academy So Alhamdulillah this journey which we started in 2016 has continued We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to give us more tawfiq our discussion about Al-Mizan last week was about the way Allama Tabatabai introduced Quranic approach to Akhlaq, which he said it's a new way. As much as we know, we don't find this method or this attitude mentioned by any philosopher or any uh, scripture before. And that is based on Tawheed. Instead of saying what you can achieve to be praised as a good person or to gain reward in the hereafter, the focus is on Tawheed. We talked about it. Now, in the same volume, volume one, after few pages, <coughs> he again has discussion about Akhlaq. And I'm going to share with you, this is from page 370. <coughs> you see, it's Al-Mizan, volume one, page 370. He says, Bahthun First, he starts with a definition of science of akhlaq. What is the science of akhlaq? Science of akhlaq is a discipline that studies human qualities of the soul. Malakat. Malakat are voluntary qualities of the soul which are somehow fixed, somehow permanent, somehow established. You can change them, but it, they are not easily changed. And some of these things can relate to our vegetative soul, nafs and abati. Some of them relate to our animal soul, and some of them relate to our human soul. Uh, because in philosophy, they say we have three levels of soul, which at the same time function in us. And according to Mullah Sadra, they are one soul, just different functions, different levels. One soul, but has like three floors. Sometimes you operate just at the level of a living being, nafs and nabati. Like people who are in permanent vegetative state. You know, sometimes people have brain death or something like that. So they are just functioning as a living being but they don't have any uh, voluntary motion or any reaction uh, like animals animals have hassasiya and taharruk bil irad so on top of that can be animal soul and unfortunately m many of human actions <laughs> or at this level and then on top of that is human soul so in the science of akhlaq we talk about malakat which relate to all these three levels of soul and we try to distinguish between virtues and vices 
so that we know that what are those things that we should be equipped with to reach Sa'ad. For some people, Sa'ad is a matter of being praised. People praise you, people respect you. Uh, for some people, Sa'ad is deeper than being praised by people. It's to have felicity in the sense of nearness to Allah and reward, etc. Depending on what you want to achieve in akhlaq, in secular ethics, maybe they are more talking about being appreciated and being a good citizen, etc. But they also may talk about self-realization and self-development. Then they say they have uh, human beings have three faculties. Yeah, many times we talked about this in uh, akhlaq in self-development. Al quwwatu al shahabiya, al quwwatu al ghabbiya, al quwwatu al aqila. Okay. Al quwwatu al shahabiya wal ghabbiya are somehow shared with animals. Al quwwatu shahabiya is for what? You know, your appetite is for bringing good to yourself. Jalbul manafir. And it is necessary if it is kept to the balanced position. It's not a bad thing. Quwwatul Qadhabiyya is to remove bad things. Daf'ul Mazar. One is Jalbul Manafi', the other is Daf'ul Mazar. With Quwwat Qadhabiyya, the faculty of anger, what you do, you protect yourself. If you didn't have anger at all, you become very passive and you would not react to any uh, attack. This is not good. If you don't have al-qubbat al you don't eat, you don't drink, you don't do anything, you don't bring any uh, uh, benefit to yourself. We need these two. But we have also al al or al as Allah calls it which is responsible for human understanding, reasoning, arguing, understanding universal concepts. All our actions relate to these three. Quwwat al-Shahawiyya, Quwwat al-Shahawiyya, Quwwat al-Ghababiyya, or Quwwat al-Aqila. And each of these three can be functioning in a balanced position which would be excellent which would be the virtuous position or it may go to the extremes efrat and tafrit the balanced position is the middle but if it goes towards this extreme or that extreme is too much or too little both are problems yeah. For example, al al If it is balanced, they call it shaja, bravery. Yeah. Who is brave? The one that, when needed, reacts to the danger, to the attacks, to the challenges. This is shaja, bravery. But if someone is rushing to react, if someone easily gets angry, easily, easily reacts, this is not good. Yeah, this is too much. This is tahawur. Or if someone is very passive, is fearful of making any reaction, feels there is danger, but doesn't do anything. This is called jopn, fear. Yeah? So shaja'a is between going to this extreme and 
becoming too aggressive or to this extreme and becoming too passive. Shajar in between. Al Qawwat al Shahawiyya, the balanced position is called Al Iffa. Al Iffa is chastity and modesty. Iffa here is for everything, even for eating, for drinking, for everything. You should be afif. Yeah, you should have the moderate and balanced position. If someone is very much run by appetites, by shahawat, is never satisfied, whether it is for eating, drinking, other types of pleasure, uh, or sexual pleasure, etc., never satisfied. This is called shara. This is extreme. If someone has no shahwa at all, this is also a problem. For angels, it's good they don't have shahwa. <laughs> but a human being has to have balanced position because Allah has put in us aql and shahwa both. If aql is in charge, we are in good position. If shahawat are in charge, we are in bad position. But if we have no shahwa at all, then it's not a proper human being. It's important how you organize your shahawat, how you use them, and what's the main reason for having this. For example, do you eat just for enjoying the taste, or do you eat in order to get energy? So, this is called then al iffa Al-Quwwatun Nutqiyatul Fikriya or Al-Quwwatul Aqila. Again, if it is at the middle and balanced position, we call it Hikmah. Hikmah means you think, you rationalize in a balanced way. If it goes to extreme by becoming too rational, too critical, you can never then make up your mind. You can never believe in anything. This is a problem. Or if it goes to this extreme and you accept everything easily, you don't argue, you don't rationalize, you don't reason, you don't evaluate and assess, this is also a problem. Okay? And then they say, if you have managed to reach balanced position with respect to those three faculties of the soul, al quwwatu al-shahawiyya, al quwwatu al-ghazabiyya, al quwwatu al-natiqa, in all three you have achieved the balanced position, which means you have iffa, chastity, you have shaja, bravery, and you have hikmah, wisdom. Then, when all these three are functioning properly, you have adal, justice. This is a matter of righteousness. So who is just? The one that in every aspect of the soul has managed to bring balance. If you are not just, Either you are zalim or munzalim. Zalim means unjust, oppressor. This is bad. Munzalim means someone who accepts the zulm. To be mazlum is not bad. Yeah, because to be mazlum doesn't mean that you wanted this. You can be oppressed without your choice. But munzalim means someone who accepts Baba in Fa'al. Someone accepts zulm. This is a problem. Neither we should do zulm nor we should welcome zulm. <laughs> Act in the way that people say, oh, this is an easy target. 
let do zolum to him or to this community. None of them. So, adala hikma, shaja'a, and iffa. These are four principles of all the virtues. Four principles of all the virtues. Then, from these, we can have derivative virtues. Uh, there is a tree I show you. Uh, I hope you can see on the screen. Uh, on page 372. You see this tree? It says, Usul al Akhlaq al Fazila. The principles of virtuous morals. So you have four major branches Al Hikma, Al Ifa, Al Adala, Al Shaja. Okay? And each of them then can have lots of derivatives. And sometimes they also relate to more than one faculty. Okay? So if you want to be, for example, qani' qana'a, content, it relates to qawwai shahawiyya, but also it relates to qawwai aqili. So sometimes more than one qawwai can be involved. In Jama us Saadat, the late Mullah Muhammad Mahdi Naragi explains virtues which relate to one quwa or to two or three quwa. So he continues. It's all a review of the science of akhlaq in order to reach the Quranic approach. He says, then in the science of akhlaq, they teach you how to acquire, how to obtain virtues or how to remove vicious traits of character. And normally, he says, they do it with two wings, two ways. من طريق العلم والعمل. Any improvement to your akhlaq needs two things. العلم والعمل. It's a matter of understanding and a matter of practicing. For example, if you are not generous and you want to become generous, or you are not brave, you want to become brave. It needs علم and عمل. From intellectual perspective, rational perspective, you have to know that this is a virtue. And you have to absorb this, grasp this through meditation, through thinking about the benefits, through thinking about the harms if you lack this virtue. Okay? So you try to understand very well that generosity is a virtue okay but practice is also very important do generous acts even if it is difficult at the beginning it might be very painful for you to do generous acts but you have to this so that little by little you get used to it and because your aql also is convinced then you can develop the quality of generosity. Or if someone is fearful, if someone is jealous, should think about the negative <coughs> consequences, at the same time try to do counter actions so that little by little, Elm and Amal together help him remove jealousy, for example, or fearfulness. <coughs> this is for the first attitude towards akhlaq, which is more based on 
what we do so that we can become a praiseworthy human being, a virtuous human being which is, who is appreciated by other people, etc. In the second approach, which is the way that prophets and adherents to religions, they follow, they don't totally disagree, but they bring the focus to what? To real felicity and happiness of human beings. And they say, if you have virtuous life, then you will have a good position in the hereafter. You would have good degree of nearness to God. So they, they have similarities, but the aim or the end can be different. But when it comes to the third approach, which is the Tawhidi approach that Quran introduces, we are not concerned that much about virtues or about the hereafter. Okay, we go even beyond thinking about reward and punishment. We just think about seeking the pleasure of Allah, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Ammal maslaku thalis. This sentence is very important. I read for you. Ammal maslaku thalis al mutakadimu bayanu. The third approach, which was mentioned above. فَيُفَارِقُ الْأَوَّلَيْنِ بِأَنَّ الْغَرَضَ فِي اِبْتِغَاءُ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ The purpose is what? Seeking face of God. لَغْتِنَاءُ الْفَضِيلَةِ الْإِنسَانِيَةِ Our main aim is not to achieve a human virtue. Human virtues are important, but that's not our main aim. Aim. And therefore, he says, uh, we also mentioned last week, sometime for someone who follows the third approach, maybe something becomes not that much significant. Or even maybe they have something that people who follow the first two attitudes, they don't appreciate. For example, I mentioned uh, humility, the amount of humility that uh, a real muvahid has before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be understood by many people who follow the first two attitudes. <coughs> then he has a very beautiful uh, discussion here which is very similar also to what he says in Rasalatul uh, Wilaya. Those who study Rasalatul Wilaya, so they find this very similar. Allah Tabatabai wrote Rasalatul Wilaya and other Rasalat that you know he has uh, uh, mainly before compiling Al Mizan. So many of the ideas that he puts forward in Al-Mizan, he had already developed as different compartments of his system. He says, إن العبد إذا أخذ إيمانه في الاشتياد والازدياد When face of a servant of Allah increases, أخذ يعني بدأ when your face uh, starts increasing, in jazabat nafsuhu tafkir. Then what happens is that you love to think more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more your iman grows, the more you think of your Lord. And you think of his beautiful names and his beautiful qualities. And then it makes you even more yearning for him. Yeah? The more you think about him, the more you 
develop love for him. Ma'rifa for Allah is impossible not to lead to love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he has all the things that we as human beings appreciate. And he says, this increases to the extent that he would worship Allah <coughs> as if he is seeing Allah. Or if he is not seeing Allah, at least he knows that Allah is seeing him. This is the meaning of Ihsan. And then Allah would start having manifestations of attractions for him. So Jazabat starts for him and his love increases. Imagine if the beloved endears himself more to the lover the lover already has fallen in love but if the beloved endears it would become more he would also follow the messenger of allah because in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni when you love allah you love everything which is associated to him you love his messenger, you love his book, you love even the creation. When you go to a forest or you go to mountains or you go next to the ri uh, river or sea, for you it's different experience than a person who doesn't believe in God. Yeah? You feel at home, you feel you are somehow <laughs> like uh, siblings <laughs> Allah has created me Allah has created them yeah so we are fellow creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you feel they are sacred if your beloved has made a painting and someone wants to you know cut it or r damage it how do you feel you feel very bad yeah this painting is very important. It's done by someone that I love. For example, by my father, by mother, I don't know, by my ustad. I love this because it is done by someone that I love. So for a servant of Allah who loves him, the whole creation becomes sacred. You don't waste or damage anything. And this keeps increasing, keeps increasing to the extent that min kull shay. In Rasalat al Walaya, Allah very much focuses on this al inqita'u an kull shay wal inqita'u ilallah. So this person would be detached from everything and just attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يُحِبُّ إِلَّا رَبَّهُ وَلَا يَخْذَعُ قَلْبُهُ إِلَّا لِوَجْهِهِ He would not love except Allah or anything that comes under Allah. He loves many things. He loves people, he loves creatures, but under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يقف على شيء وعنده شيء من الجمال والحس would not come across anything that has some beauty unless he connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says this beauty is coming from him so everything reminds him of Allah for someone who is not in that condition everything has potential of distracting us from God yeah but for this person it's a matter of everything directing him towards God everything is a sign is ayah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sign by itself is nothing la nafsiyata lahu 
every sign its value is based on what it's showing then he says vabel jumla like in rasalatul wilaya we have many times he says bil jumla is the conclusion of a discussion <coughs> it's very important as a conclusion فَيَنْقَتَعُ حُبُّهُ عَنْ كُلِّ شَيْءِ إِلَى رَبِّهِ His love for everything will stop and just become for the sake of his Lord. So nothing independently is dear to him, is loved by him. If it is dear, it's because it's sign of God. فَلَا يُحِبُّ شَيْئًا إِلَّا لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهِ وَفِي اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهِ Would not love anything except for the sake of Allah. Then what happens is his understanding and actions change. يَتَبَدَّلْ نَحْوُ إِدْرَاكِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ The way he understands things and the way he acts become different. With respect to understanding, لَا يَرَى شَيْئًا إِلَّا وَيَرَى اللَّهِ قَبْلَهُ وَمَعَهِ Would not see anything except sees Allah before and after. As Amir al-Mumani said, مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ اللَّهَ قَبْلَهُ وَبَعْدَهُ وَمَعَهُ I have not seen anything except I have seen Allah with him after it and before. Everything loses its independence. People who have not reached this point, they look at everything from Behind a hijab, a veil, they cannot see dependence on God. They think they are independent. But he has no hijab, can see they are all dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Imagine a very uh, simple example. For example, suppose if someone, for example, his fingers are covered up to this think these figures are independent yeah but if this hand is removed you see they are all connected to the palm just a simple example sometime when your knowledge is limited you think things are independent and then Sometimes you do everything to please them in order to get what you want, not knowing that you have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the source. This is about understanding. About action also, he says, لا يطلب ولا يقصد ولا يرجو ولا يخاف ولا يختار ولا يترك ولا ييأس ولا يستوهش ولا يرضى ولا يسخط إلا لله وفي الله. Basically, he doesn't do anything. Even he doesn't desire anything. He doesn't have hope in anything. He doesn't fear anything. He doesn't become hopeless or despaired about anything. He doesn't feel lonely or he doesn't become pleased or angry, except for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So his purposes would be different from ordinary people. And his actions are done for ends which are different from ordinary people. He yuridu vajha rabbih not that he is concerned about whether this is virtue or vice. Not that he Na'uzubillah has vicious character. No, he is not thinking about this and automatically those things will be sorted out. Instead of you fixing all the problems one by one, 
this uproots all the problems. Yuridu vajha rabbi. Wala hamma lahu fi fadilatin wala radila. He has no concern about whether this is virtue or wise. He is working for someone that he is the root of all the virtues. You don't need to worry about these things. If you are with him, everything at all levels are fixed. Lal tefata lahu ila dunya or akhirah. Oh Jannah, oh Nar. He doesn't think about dunya or akhirah, about heaven or hell. Everything is sorted out by my master. I don't need to worry. The only concern that he has is his Lord. He says this account, this explanation that we have mentioned with very brief sentences, if you carefully reflect on it, it would be sufficient. And you would realize that in the third approach, which is Tawhidi approach, the issue of virtue and vice altogether disappears. All the things that we have, generosity, chastity, bravery, wisdom, all these virtues, there are tens of them, four are the principal, otherwise there are tens of them, all will be replaced with one thing, Vajhullah, face of Allah. And again, he says, then in some cases, maybe they even differ on then whether certain action is good or not. If you follow previous app attitudes, <coughs> you may have different understanding compared to this person who is fully uh, directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, this discussion uh, finishes. Then he has another discussion, which uh, we leave it for, inshallah, your own study, which is about a theory in ethics, which uh, we can call it relativism, which believes that uh, there are no universal values, and values can be changed from society to society, uh, but. I think for our discussion this much was enough. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us tawfiq to study in this term uh, some of the discussions of Al-Mizan about uh, Shafa'a, about Risala, about Akhlaq, uh, etc. And we ask Allah to send his rahmah to Allama and his teachers. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Do we have questions? Online there's no question. Okay. Yes, yes. salam. Listening to this section you were talking, it sounded like it was really kind of a very irfani yes. text. Yes. Uh, and I was thinking this is written in a tafsir, in his tafsir. Does he bring any Quranic proofs to this or he, this is his style that he just, uh, because you know, seeking the face of Allah, how is it proved from the Quran, or does he? Yeah. Is it, you know, and the others, the manifestations and all that. Does he bring it from Quranic ayats or Quranic? Yes. Ayats? So in Rasalatul Wilaya, he brings uh, philosophical argument yeah. and then Quran and Hadith to support it. 
So this is a summary of a whole Rasalatul Wilaya. Right. Yes. Okay, and which particular verse does he discuss? For I might have missed it initially, but where does he bring this discussion? Which verse? So in the previous session, we talked about verses of the Quran, which talk about Tawheed approach. Okay. Like, like, particular Surah Baqarah is not like, like for example, uh, Aslama Bachahu Lillah, Yashri Nafsahu Ptira Amarlatullah. Any question? So, sh shall we have a little break? Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, this method that I think it's, that you know, you discussed in some classes about ihraq and burning, mm. um, and you know, there's a concept of referring to inna lillah wa inna lillahi raji'un. So, if you would say, Allah ma'ala sabah benefited greatly from Sayyid Ali Qazi regarding this, or they have different approaches? Yes. Allama, even for his tafsir, he has benefited a lot from Ayatollah Qadi. So he has given him a kind of new look. And the method of Ihraq, uh, we had it in Lubul Lubab, that is for uh, getting rid of attachment to yourself. Because we by nature think more about ourselves you know and even if we want to get closer to Allah we want it for sometimes uh, egoistic reasons how to get rid of all traces of ego it needs Allah's intervention and that is when he makes you pure become mukhlas. That needs a kind of burning. And this burning can take place easily when there is fire of love. In Misbah sharia says, hope is a fire that would not pass by anything unless would burn it. So love can burn anything other than beloved. Only love can do that. Do you think his tafsir was influenced by his Irf Irfani uh, approach, or this is a completely separate that the philosophical is, is not brought his? Would you say that tafsir Mizan is Irf Irfani, or is a philosophical tafsir? It's not an Irfani tafsir, right? Or it's, it's not philosophical or Irfani in the sense that he is using method of Irfan or philosophy. It's tafsir al-Qur'an bil-Qur'an, but is supported also. So the same conclusion he makes based on the Qur'an, then he argues from philosophical perspective, from uh, Irfani perspective, but as a support. But the main thing is to understand it from the Quran. So how did he discuss the point about Quran to John and the Kuzi Shaykh? You mentioned something. Yeah. I can't remember. You said. So anything that you need for guidance and for progress is explained in the Quran. And for sure, then this book has to be clear by itself. If Quran explains everything, then how can it be itself not clear? So Allah says, uh, Quran is a book that if we uh, approach it properly, we can understand. Because it's tabiyan the kulluche, and certainly something which is explaining everything must itself be understandable and clear. We can take for Eric or? It's 9.20. Okay, maybe five minutes only. Uh, five minute break and then inshallah we will have fiqh discussion. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam.